Hey there, welcome back to Connor's show. It's nighttime. If you had a weak heart or easily scared, maybe not the best time to watch this. And if you're the type who hesitates to go to the bathroom alone in the dark, you might want to click away now. The next part of the video could be something you won't forget. Seriously, we got five creepy movies ready for you. Let's check them out right now. Number five, Vadim Vidimich, a Russian YouTuber, often explores the radioactive remains of Chernobyl, an abandoned power plant that experienced a meltdown in the 1980s. During one exploration, he and his friends discover an eerie abandoned area. They come across unsettling sights, including two dolls, one headless, the other with aggressively poked in eyes. While these might be the work of edgy teens or even someone in their group, they decide to continue exploring. They find a picture of a Russian team gathered around a mysterious object and Vadim seeks help to understand its significance. This image may represent the children who frequented the daycare before the meltdown. The haunting exploration also reveals a disturbing photo of a crying Russian woman in full uniform, the meaning of which remains unclear. It seems like they are encountering something significant and translating the Russian text may provide more insight. As time passes, it becomes clear that they're under observation. White eyes initially appear on the other side of a window. Initially mistaken for a light, it became evident as the light hits the chest and shouldn't be visible behind. The eyes reappear in a nearby doorway, closer this time. It's just a moment, but seriously, whose flashlight looks like that? Not any I've seen. Those definitely resemble eyes, glowing ones at that. They revisit a section of the building they've explored before, finding the door partially open this time, prompting cautious entry. Floating eyes, similar in size and shape to the previous ones, are observed. However, this time, they realize it's the top of someone's head, someone incredibly tall and complete. A figure with a blacked out face and long white garment stands motionless. They retreat but encounter it again. The white cloves resemble the dull cloves seen earlier. Could that have been a warning? As it gets closer, it seems shorter, but impossibly broad-shouldered and powerful. Despite fear and exhaustion frozen in place, they let it get too close. I hope it was just a mannequin, but its movements suggest otherwise. Да, Вадим, уйди назад. The group retreats back inside, feeling cornered, and ultimately decides to smash through a window, taking the risk of climbing through broken glass just to escape from whatever they just encountered. Number four. Mazined before I reveal what's in this box. A disclaimer, I'm not responsible for any consequences of viewing it. Now, does this doll make you feel different? Previous owners claim it causes headaches and profound sadness. Trying to ignore it worsens the effects. The doll, nameless or unspoken, induces a headache with a high-pitched squeal. I saw she just moved then. The doll gave me a days-long headache share your experiences? Unfortunately, the camera person sounds a bit down. She won't be doing the doll live stream tonight. Maybe the doll is affecting her mood. Hey guys, just a quick um, video. We're not going live tonight. Um, While investigating, the doll's arm subtly moves as she mentions it. Later, in her room, surrounded by creepy dolls at 5 a.m., the baby's carriage moves on its own. The unnamed doll is inside, overseeing. A paper in front of the doll also moves simultaneously. I believe the doll has telekinetic properties, explaining its previous movement. The wheels wobble like someone steering, not pulling a string. It's been over two months since the last video. Maybe nothing happened, or maybe so much did that the uploader got rid of the doll, wanting to forget. Number three, it's Todd Walker from the ghost hunting channel Holy Walkers has witnessed countless paranormal events. However, the stakes heightened when something trailed him home from an investigation in a chilling April encounter. He captured the ominous signs on camera. <laughs> Using a second camera, he dispels the notion of strings non-visible and either shot could they have to use special effects. the cabinet stirs, and then the refrigerator violently swings open, revealing an eerie lack of reflection. No one is seen nearby. 
Over the next five days, unsettling events unfold, shaking lamb sheets, self-closing doors, and a shadowy figure near the stairs. While trick photography may explain some, a closer look reveals an autonomous movement in the lampshades. At the same time, all objects are conveniently on the left, partially concealed, making manipulation easy. Tart could have pushed the couch and returned it by himself. Likewise, the book that falls could have been pushed off camera. Someone might be grabbing the lamp corner while hiding behind the couch. The same goes for when it flips over with a shadow person appearing on the wall. Maybe a spirit is bending light to get noticed, but Todd could have unplugged the light seconds later, making it questionable. The other couch moves, but Todd could have crawled behind at one. It would have been more convincing if both couches moved simultaneously, which would be impossible for one person. Around this time, Todd's son, Kyle, emerges, possibly sleepwalking. However, a strange shadow poses by where he was, followed by a loud crash that somehow doesn't wake him up. A spine-chilling analysis. This leaves me wondering if he's either faking it all or in a deep trance as he stands at the top of the steps, staring directly at the camera. Is this a setup for dramatic effect? Or is the spirit letting Todd know it's aware of being watched? Carl looks like he might fall forward, but at the last moment, something pushes him back into his room. It's almost like it's not time for that to happen yet, possibly foreshadowing a future event. Nothing else happens until four days later, when their camera records a ball mysteriously rolling down the hallway. They claim not to have done it, but the lack of a second angle raises doubts. Todd feels the paranormal energy growing stronger, deciding to explore his house at night while everyone else sleeps. He picks up indicators of a child spirit, one who might have met a gruesome end. This could be toll wheezing, but some hear a girl screaming from out. What do you hear? What's up? He hears it too, solidifying that it was a ghost. As he steps outside, the sound becomes clearer. Is there anyone out here? It captures chilling screams outside, possibly a ghostly child. Later, he confronts the spirit, receiving spine-chilling responses in the living room, and an eerie chant unnerved viewers. Can you hear it too? Make yourself known. Dude, I swear someone just came from back here. What was that? It's in the same area where objects moved. A paper towel roll mysteriously stands up. Strange occurrences continue as Todd hears a child's voice, turning deep and chilling, asking to be heard. A ghostly face appears in the door. The unsettling events unfold at every turn. Is there anything that you want to say? That's not him, as he is exhaling when the eerie voice occurs. If a little girl ghost, hope she leaves soon. Whatever took her life, I hope didn't follow. Given Kyle's close call with the steps, it seems there's something else with them. So yeah, it's real. Number two, Becky is the name of a cursed doll who always obeys commands. Her most recent owner is Jerry, and he claims to have formed a strong connection with her. If these videos are to be believed, Okay, I got it recording now. Becky, if that was you, do that one more time, please. That was, whatever that was, was impressive. Make those lights light all the way up like you just did and hold them. And that wasn't just a one-time occurrence either. Do that again, Becky. Turn out light yellow for me if you're here. Okay, that was green. Can you do yellow? Push a little harder. Jerry doesn't go into any of her history, but she has piercing blue eyes and a serious expression that can make you feel nervous if you look for too long. She doesn't play well with others. She only likes Jerry. But to further demonstrate, he sets up a Morty doll for her that she likes to push around. For fun, she's already done it once before tonight. And so he tells her to do it again, this time with the camera running for proof.
you knocked them off your shelf last time. Can you do it again? The Morty doll has a big head, so maybe it's a little top heavy and fell over on its own. Otherwise, Becky definitely pushed it over. A month later, he decides to test it out again with something different this time. He puts a smaller object in such a way that it would be very hard to push over. He tells Becky to do her thing. Can you knock it over? The doll thinks it over for a bit and decides it has an even better plan. Becky grabs the spirit box and tips it over. I believe it might be her because the spirit box lights up right before it tips over, which never happened before. Perhaps Becky couldn't make the spirit box work and knocked it over out of frustration. Or maybe she was just messing with Jerry by knocking over something different than what he had asked for. Either way, I don't see how that spirit box could fall backward on its own, especially when the MF meter next to it remains upright. Despite this, Jerry keeps working with her and soon, Becky seems to gain control over the spirit box and uses it to communicate with him. Becky, are you here right now? Be At first, Becky's voice is hard to hear, but it becomes clearer over time. Jerry discovers she's possessed by a spirit with a gruesome past. Later that day, he receives another scary response. It to me, it seems like I hear Becky scream from a distance. In mind, these recordings span weeks, and it's consistently the same voice. There hasn't been a single instance of a different voice through the spirit box. It's always Becky talking. It raises some intriguing questions. Also, not every encounter with Becky involves screaming. There's a moment that might seem tender if it weren't so creepy and weird. After weeks of building a close friendship, Jerry has a special request much more critical than changing lights. Can you come out and touch my hand? A lone orb crosses past Becky and then floats directly into the center of his hand. Jerry wasn't expecting a serious answer, but it doesn't matter. He got one and the bond is complete. He hopes Becky is a good spirit, but if not, it's a perfect example of how easily a demonic force can deceive. And son like Jerry, I wouldn't invite a spirit with such abilities to touch me. This scary video doesn't seem to cause him anxiety, and it wasn't a one-time occurrence. Number one, there's a YouTube channel called The Ghosts of Mississippi, dedicated to debunking paranormal hotspots. They fearlessly travel nationwide for investigations, exemplifying true dedication. One haunting series features a church in their home state. For on December 19, they enter, express sympathy for the church's condition, and address any spirits. After establishing trust, they make a small request from anything listening. I just make one loud noise. Sure, he might have intentionally scraped his foot to create the sound, so this alone doesn't serve as conclusive evidence of a ghost. However, when they bring out the spirit box and begin posing questions, they receive two distinct responses. All right, do you want to speak to me now? When he feigns ignorance, a second note emerges, seemingly not from the spirit box, but from a row of pews further back. Yes? Yes? Even if the spirit box is just picking up random radio signals, the chances of hearing nope twice, perfectly timed with a question, are pretty unlikely in my book. Suddenly, orbs start swirling around, and then it mentions a name. I could barely make it out, so I'm a bit skeptical about this part. Kevin, I heard that. Versus subsequent plea for assistance, however, is crystal clear, and it's eerie how it takes an appropriate amount of time to respond. I don't believe the orbs swirling around are mere coincidence. Then there's this strange shadow figure in the stall. Is this Kevin the spirit, or is this the thing that Kevin was asking for help against just a couple of weeks later on January 5, 2020? They return to the church for a closer look, this time as one of them kneels down to look at the mirror. This creepy image of an evil entity forms before their very eyes. So stand up, you can't see. Dude, I'm seeing something demonic. <laughs> a creepy demonic figure appears in the mirror, 
described by the investigators as having raised hands, two eyes, and a small open mouth on the right side. When the investigator stands up, the figure disappears and attempts to recreate it with a light on the mirror fail. The investigator claims to have felt something grab his hat during the experience. They decide to leave due to roaming cold spots, and as they exit, a hiss is heard. Freaking. As they enter the final room, a mysterious warning sound emanates from deeper within, for which I have no explanation other than the paranormal. This doesn't sound like any animal I've ever heard, and I can practically feel the malice in its guttural growl. They look for the source of the growl for just a moment longer, then decide to make a swift exit. Was with so many eerie sounds and sightings in such a short time, I have little doubt that something terrifying lurks within these walls. Its very presence defiles this location, and maybe that's why this demonic force has chosen to call this place home. I doubt it's leaving anytime soon. They hear a warning sound from deeper within,